because we know that there's no equality unless everyone has rights. We probably more than most understand what you risk when we lose democracy. So my name is Randy Weingarten. I'm the president of the AFT, which is an American trade union, although we do have members internationally. Um, and we are 1.7 million members strong. And my members make a difference in other people's lives. So we have teachers from pre-K through higher education, social workers, psychologists, uh, bus drivers, paraprofessionals, nurses, therapists in healthcare. We're the fastest growing healthcare union and nurse union. Um, we are the largest higher education union and we also represent other public services. Every social, economic, equity, economic issue shows up in a hospital or in a classroom. It just shows up there. You think about COVID, all the work that my members did as public employees to keep the roads open, to keep hospitals open, to keep to get testing for people in terms of COVID, the, the work that nurses and respiratory therapists did to keep people alive, the work they do now in a very, very broken healthcare system in the United States. And then of course the educators the work to nurture kids, to teach kids all the time. Every issue shows up. The really angering thing though is that instead of coming together to support the people who support others, who support our kids, who support our, our patients, who, who support people getting well, who support nurturing kids as learning, instead of helping us, instead of doing that, you have the culture wars and the division and the banning books and stopping us from teaching honest history, trying to erase history, trying to take money out of public services and public schools and, and, and using you know, every bit of misinformation and disinformation to undermine the very fabric of democracy and the very fabric of, of public education and public services. I would never have imagined 20 years ago that in 2014 and 2016 and till now, we would be talking in America about weather democracy. What we as a union movement have always done is try to strengthen democracy and, and to try to ensure that we had a multi-ethnic, multi-racial democracy in the United States, trying to make sure that you know people could vote and 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 people could have access to to the vote. People could have access to, as we often say, you know, it's not the politicians that determine who their voters are; it's the voters who determine who the politicians are. So we wanted to strengthen democracy, make sure that voice and agency was heard by all. But in the last 10 years, we have had, just like around the country, around the world, this assault on who has voice, who has agency, who has rights. And if you think about it that way, that's the same issue as unions have faced forever, because it's who has voice, who has agency, who has power in the economic sphere? Who can decide how to lift wages, how to have job security, how to have working conditions that, that, that you can rely on and live on and, 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 and the economic security so that your family can be part of the middle class? Now, what we're doing is fighting for those very, very basic rights in all of our society through our democracy. So unions, because of the fights that we have had, because we understand the right of association, because we understand the transformational nature of collective bargaining, because we know that there's no equality unless everyone has rights, we probably more than most understand what you risk when we lose democracy.
what we need to do and what we try to do is not just talk about how we can improve our own nations, but how we take these democratic principles throughout the world. Populism, progressivism, all really important if they are used as a way to create an activist bent throughout the world so that we actually stop autocracy, stop um, theocracy, stop fascism, and have the people of the world unite to help all of the people of the world. And that's where Western democracies, whether it's Australia or whether it's the United States, whether, you know, whoever we are, we can actually help a lot. Not lead, but help a lot in terms of all the world. But there's one more thing that we've learned, which is we can't outsource the power to the union leaders. This is the power of the membership. This is the power of talking to each other, of knocking on doors, of being a union together in relationship with each other. And that's what I love about young people coming into our movement. They understand that together, you have more power than you have alone. They get it in a way sometimes that my generation, the boomer generation does not. But what we're seeing is that if we create an environment where people can come together, where people can be in relation with each other, where they can be in community where, with each other, and where we are together trying to fight for these principles of freedom and justice and opportunity and social equality and climate sustainability and shared prosperity through education and a labor movement, that is where we thrive.